Hello all. Um, today I'm going to be talking about gender identity. Um, a little bit broadly, but I'm very specifically going to be talking about gender fluid, which is a type of gender um, that specifically I am. And here's my flag. I pointed the camera to my flag. This I found out I was gender fluid before um, the huge craze about it. And so I had to pay for that to be custom made. It cost me $80. And I accidentally shipped it to Korea. Long story. Um, and now they're like $5 flags, which makes me sad, but whatever. Um, to talk broadly about sexuality, sorry, gender identity, um, I think the best way to describe it is... Um, it took me months to put it into words, to put it into very clear, concise words. Um, and it was because my boyfriend, who is a very heteronormative cis male, he asked me, what's the difference between being gay and being trans? And I knew in my mind, I was like, duh, they're completely different. But I realized to him, who has never questioned anything in his life about himself, this is something that he thinks he just doesn't know about. And I couldn't put it into words because I take a while to, to think things through. <laughs> and it took me like months to figure it out. And this is, this is how I see it now. Gender identity is how you feel about yourself and sexuality is how you feel about other people. So myself, my gender identity is gender fluid, which I'll explain later in the video. And my sexuality is pansexual, which is very similar to bisexual. Um, those are two completely opposite things. They're, they're just like if I was a man and if I was straight. Those are two different parts of my brain. And what, like I explained, it's, it's about how you feel inside about yourself. When you look in the mirror, what do you see? And you look at, and then when you look at someone else, based on how you see them, do you think that they are sexually attractive or not sexually attractive? That's sexuality. These are two different things and it's important to educate people who don't understand because maybe this is the confusion that leads to hate. Because I know for my boyfriend, anything he doesn't understand leads to um, aggression and it's only because he's very angry that he doesn't understand it. And I know that that's the same for a lot of people. So I think that spreading the word about what all this is, is really going to help. I'm going to talk now about gender identity on as a whole. Um, everyone says gender is a spectrum. And for me, I never understood that. I'm like, what's a spectrum? I don't understand that. And instead of using the same words everyone else is using that confuse me and maybe don't completely relate to everyone else, I came up with a way to explain it for myself because I am very visual and I am very precise. So I came up with a number line. Um, there's a number line. I know this is going to be backwards. My, my camera flips, but one being girl, 10 being boy. Most people either trans or cis, which cis just means you're born in the correct body. So if you're a boy, you identify as a boy and you have a penis and you are a full boy with X, Y chromosomes. So one in 10 is trans and cis. They know that they are a boy. They know that they are a girl. Almost most people fall in this category. But then there's some other people. And a lot of people say, well, there's 10 numbers between 1 and 10. 1, blah, 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 10. But really, if you think about it, there's an infinite amount of numbers between 1 and 10. There's 1.1, 1.11, etc. All the way up to 9.9 repeating infinitely. And that makes a lot more sense to me than saying a spectrum. Someone's gender might be a two. 
they are like 90% female, but in their slightest bit, they're like, maybe I'm just a little bit a boy too. And then there's, I personally, I'm an eight. I am 80% boy, 20% girl. That I'll explain again later a little bit. But then there's also, you know, 5.9082, blah, blah, blah. Just because I don't see that on the number line doesn't mean it's not valid. It's not a valid number. There's only so many numbers you can put on a number line before you can't write anymore, but that doesn't mean that they're not there. Then there's zero. It's not on the number line, but it's, it's there. I would say that's like a gender or non-gender conforming. They're, they're still a number, but they just don't associate with all those positive numbers. They're meh, I don't like them. Or even someone's, someone's number is purple. And that I would say would be, again, like a non-binary. They just, they don't even want a number at all. They're completely over here. And just because you might not understand it, or it might not be on your perfect concise line, doesn't mean it's not valid. Purple is a real thing. It's, meh. it's a real thing in our vision, in our lives. And if everyone else is a number and this person comes around saying, hey, I'm purple, it's going to freak some people out. But if you give them time to explain, and even if you don't understand personally, my boyfriend does not understand gender fluid at all but he allows me to be who I am because he knows it's important to me. And I really love him for that. So sometimes, even if you don't understand, it's just about letting the person exist as they are. And maybe asking a few questions, polite questions. Do not ask about their genitals unless you are fairly close to them. Excuse me. You know, don't ask how they have sex. I don't understand why people's first inclination to anything weird is, how do you go to the bathroom? What do your genitals look like? How do you have sex? Why are you asking that? That is extremely intrusive. I'm not gonna tell you what, oh, actually I am gonna tell you what my genitals are in other videos, but if a person comes up to me on the street and they ask me, are you a boy or a girl? I'm like, why do you care? Do you wanna have sex with me? That's the only reason you should be asking. Or are you my doctor? Which they are not. So. Don't ask intrusive questions. Ask something like, oh, what are your pronouns? That is very important. Some people say, oh, I like to be called she, her, which is me. Even though I'm more boy than girl, I like to be called she, her, because that's just what I've been called my whole life. And for me in particular, and this is a rare case, I don't care about pronouns. If, if someone calls me a boy, it doesn't bother me. It really doesn't. Even though I am genetically a female, and most people do guess that I am a female, it doesn't bother me if someone calls me a man. Like, But a lot of people use they slash them pronouns, and I personally, I don't particularly like that, but that's just me being bullheaded. But if someone asked me to call, me that, call them that, I would because that's their choice, that's how they look at life, and that's how they look at themselves. So that's my little tangent about um, gender identity. So remember, we're going back to the scale. I'm a, an eight on like a regular day. Um, whenever I get like all in front of the camera, I get a little girlier. But this is the annoying, long-winded... Um, explanation of what it's very hot here I'm sorry it's very very humid so I might look really gross and it's because I am very gross and sweaty right now I'm sorry um, a gender fluid is as as explained it is sometimes I feel like a boy sometimes I feel like a girl sometimes I feel like both sometimes I feel like neither and sometimes I feel like a weird mix in between, which is where my 80-20 comes in. Most of the time I'm like, oh, excuse me, ma'am, let me hold open that door for you. And, oh my God, I don't want to wear a skirt, ew. And then some days I'm just like, oh my gosh, I'm going to do my hair. And if I could do makeup, I would do makeup. And I have, I have a whole lot of dresses hanging in there that I usually get from Hot Topic. That's usually my style. And I look gorgeous, you know? 
And it really just comes down to whatever I'm feeling on the inside. And it varies from day to day, sometimes minute to minute. And for me, it's extremely frustrating. I would rather just be one, you know, I'm like, like, even if I was trans, I'm like, I'd rather just be a one or a 10, just give me something. But I am constantly like this. And maybe the reason I'm like this is so that I can educate other people about it. But, um, it took me a very, very long time to figure out who I was. I realized when, um, I was 16-ish that I was bisexual. The first person I ever liked was a girl. So at first I thought it was a lesbian because I didn't understand what bisexual was. And I thought that being bisexual was why maybe I felt like a boy and a girl in the same time. I felt like I had to be... A girl that wears a suit whenever I dated a girl and then um, one time I actually dated a very butch lesbian and I found myself in the the slightly girl of the relationship where I let her take over and then I was like this this feels weird and a lot of my life I did feel weird I felt like I was too masculine for men and too feminine for girls and I know it's a cliche and everyone says this who's a little different, but I, I never felt right in my own body. I couldn't figure it out. I'd had long hair all the way down to here, which is very hot and exhausting and I hated it, but I loved being able to flip it all around and I love, I would, I would love to have wigs so I could just put on long hair for the day and then take it off at the end of the day because short hair is amazing. You should always try it. And then I like, it took me until I was 22 and one day I heard about gender fluidity and I looked it up and I was like, oh, that's interesting. I've never heard that before, but I'll keep that in mind. And the way that I process things in my life is I write about it. I made a story, a book-ish, that um, main character was a wizard, a very, very straight, hypersexual wizard. I don't like the name witch for a female wizard, so I just say wizard. And she fell in love with head over heels because they they have soulmates in this universe. She saw this boy and she's like, oh my God, that's my soulmate. I got to go say hi. So she goes over and two days later, the boy's like, actually, I'm a girl. I'm gender fluid. And so I started experimenting with the character. I was like, what is this? And she was, she was very gender fluid. Like one day she would be wearing a binder and her hair would be up and she looked like a boy and then other days she had she had very very long hair like i used to have and she would wear dresses and she'd be like her favorite color was pink and she loved everything and i realized that that was the polarity of me i i was very hyper masculine i used to wear my hair up in hats so and when people would be like how are you sir i'd be like he he i'm a boy and then some days I would like burst into tears if someone called me a, a boy and it was so strange to me. So one day in the book, the girl says, well, I'm playing loosely with the pronouns. The girl bursts crying in front of her wizard girlfriend and says, I know that I wasn't supposed to be a girl. I was supposed to be a boy who is gender fluid. And literally the second I typed that, I was like, oh my God, me too. And that, that helped me work through so much. Like, like I know that I was supposed to be born a boy that sometimes transitioned into a female rather than a female who's mostly transitioned into a boy and sometimes would go back to female. But but I don't, I don't feel the need to do anything about that. I wish I could, but I don't feel the need to do anything about that. And again, that's a question that you don't ask unless you're very, very close with the person is questions about surgery and transitioning. That is very, very personal. And a lot of people, surprisingly, do not transition at all. They might socially transition, which means they have done nothing but say, hey guys, I'm a boy now. And they still look exactly the same, except they use different pronouns and maybe a different name. But again, that's an extremely personal journey and you shouldn't ask unless you know the person very, very well. Well, I feel like I hit most of it, but here I'm going to be doing videos on any kind of 
um, gender identity that I can find. Even though I don't personally relate to all of them, I'm going to be doing videos to try and, like I said, like try and educate and release the ignorance and maybe if some people understand it more and could put a face to the to the word it might help some people and I guess I'll just close with this that I like this last line that I wrote excuse me I'm terrible I have terrible etiquette and I'm burping a lot I'm sorry um the last thing I wrote which I really like is uh the thing about gender identity and sexuality is only you can tell yourself what you are you decide what number you are or even if you're on the scale at all and no one can take that away from you and I know it's hard but there will be one day where you get to be happy and you get to say that you know no one did take this away from me so one thing I got to have so I hope for that maybe this will be the video that someone goes wow maybe this is me and I hope that is I hope that's true I hope that I can help someone but for now, I'm rambling. I'll just say goodbye.